All right, so now I'm going to speed up your workflow a little bit in the fact that I've been showing you, you know, this control E, control R, control shift commands, stand on your head type deal. And some students aren't like that. Some students are very, um, they're oriented within the menus. So let's go in here and clear the scene out. Again. The X one is pretty uh, standalone. I would always kind of hit delete. Again, if you don't like X on the keyboard, however, delete over here works just the same way. So we're going to kind of look at object tools right now before we go on to basic shapes. Let's go into cube. Okay. Let's hit tab. Now, I showed you the edge loop, which is what? Control R. Okay. Okay. Another way to do this is this one loop clip slide. So, anytime I want to do that, I can instantly just go like that and it works. So, that's another way to do it. Okay. Another thing I taught you was extrude. Okay. Let's go into face. Now there's an extrude region and extrude individual. Let's kind of look at extrude individual first. Bam, it's extruded. If I right click, and if I wanted to go into scale, I could. Again, extrude individual. W on the keyboard. Allows me to pull that down. Okay. So what's an extrude region? Let's say I got both of these and I extrude individual. Okay, they look good until I hit the scale feature and scale them into the center and scale them apart. Um, you can see that there is a hidden face here. So let me scale this one all by itself and scale this one all by itself. So that's what extrude individual does. It extrudes each face individually from its counterpart that's highlighted. Even though I had two faces highlighted, it extruded them separately. So what if I wanted to extrude them together? Well, that's extrude region. Okay. Now I'll right click and scale into the center. This time, there is no hidden face. These hidden faces can be a huge pain. There's no doubt about it. Here's why. Uh, let's grab two faces, and I'll extrude individual. I'll scale them to the center. And from all practical application, this one looks almost exactly like this one. But be very careful. There is a face here. That means anytime I add a modifier to this, let's say I add a modifier like these multi res, and I hit subdivide, you can see what happens. Let's hit apply. Look at this side that had the extrude region compared to the extrude individual. So, much different. Okay, now there's other things in here. So, there's normals, unwrapping, shading, repeat. So, there's a lot of stuff in here that we're going to be using, but not right yet. Okay. There is translate, rotate, and scale, but I would say translate, rotate, and scale down here are just as easy to get to. All right, so I got a few minutes. What I want to do is one more thing in this video. Let me delete that and add a box. Okay. Let's go into local and global transformation for a second. OK, 
okay, what's that? Okay, well, what I'm going to do is rotate this. Okay. Again, E on the keyboard. I'm just going to rotate it just a little bit. I'm going to grab a face here. So, tab, face, grab this face. W on the keyboard. Okay, local versus global. Right now I'm in global transformation, basically stating that it's world up orientation is always going to be world up and always going to be the same no matter what face. If I grab this face over here, notice the manipulator handle. Manipulator handle goes like this. Well, let me do something real quick. Let me hit extrude. So let's say extrude individual and I can move that out. Okay, notice it follows the transform path just like that but if I right click and I try to do that I wouldn't be able to I'd have to move it up and then over a little bit alright well let's look at this other side let's do that one more time extrude individual I'm going to right click and this time I'm going to go into local. Local allows me to move it out based upon its normal. Okay, And a normal basically states that this is the front of geometry, it follows along this axis, and it understands its own um, world properties based upon the object. And that's why its pivot point matches the center of the face pointing out because the normal is pointing out and we'll get into normals when we get into texture rendering and lighting but for right now just know that normals face out of faces and in some cases normals get reversed <laughs> and we'll, we'll look at that okay so that is local versus global and that is also some of the mesh tools on the left hand side also you should know that T on the keyboard hides the mesh tools. Let's say I don't want to use them ever, I could do that. Okay. And N on the keyboard launches this big old thing of doom. Um, this is basically all of these in one area. Okay, so that's N. Alright, enjoy this video. Let's move on to the next video.